Hello and welcome everyone to this brand new series of mine, you know, because every time a series of mine ends, something has to take its place, right? So what is this series exactly? Simple, I'll be taking a look at some characters from various games of my choosing and we'll be taking a look at everything about them, from design and personality, to any symbolism or their character arc. For this first episode, we'll be taking a look at none other than Junko Enoshima. Junko Enoshima is the main villain from the Danganronpa series. What's Danganronpa you might ask? Well, if you aren't aware, Danganronpa is a serious mystery game where several students from a school known as Hope's Peak Academy are trapped in a location together, and the only way to leave is to kill someone and get away with it. And it's such a joy to say if I do say so myself. Get out of here, Junko. This series has nothing to do with you. But you're talking about me, aren't you? Shut up. Let me go back to doing my own thing. <laughs> <sighs> now, where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? Oh, uh, yes. How about we talk about her design? Let's start out with her name. Being Japanese, there's a chance there could be some sort of symbolic meaning. I'm probably overthinking it, but I don't care, I'm doing it anyway. First off, there's her first name, Junko. According to behind the name, Junko could stand for obedience or pure while being paired with child. Considering she certainly isn't pure, the most likely candidate would be obedience. The best thing I could potentially come up with is how Junko is absurdly dedicated and obedient to despair. After a bit of research, I found that Enoshima is the name of a small town in Japan. Funnily enough, it's commonly overshadowed by alternatives, like the town of Kamakura. Kind of like how another character, Izuru Kamakura, overshadows her in how he is the ultimate student. Coincidence? Probably. But I like to think otherwise, just to make me feel better about myself. She also goes by Ultimate Fashionista and Ultimate Despair, for obvious reasons. She is a supermodel after all, and for Ultimate Despair, she's a human definition of despair, obviously. Next up, let's talk about her appearance. If it wasn't obvious, Junko was modeled off of, you know, a, a supermodel. I mean, she is a fashionista, after all. To help me in this section, however, I decided to go off of this official character reference sheet right here. There was one slight problem, though. I don't exactly know Japanese. So, with the help of some friends on Discord, we were able to translate quite a bit of it, surprisingly enough, and BAM! Here is our translation of the character reference sheet. So that being said, how about I give you the grand tour? Starting from the top, you'll see she has two little bear pins, one white and one black. These are obviously to represent her connection to Monokuma. They're also supposedly made of elastic, not that that's important, but whatever. Over here you can see where it explains that she has twin tails, which is also pretty self-explanatory. Alright, now that we're on this twin tail segment, I'm I'm kind of going off of the script here, but I think I realized something after looking, because I felt like the twin tails had a little bit of a significance somewhere, one way or another. So I looked up twin tails, and apparently, twin tails is also commonly referred to with children in Japan because they seem to be pretty popular with children so that means twin tails apparently also have some sort of symbolism of innocence as well and looking back at the uh, Junko name what well, it also means pure so now that I think about it a little bit more the innocence thing does kind of actually work a little bit because it makes it seem like Junko is innocent even though she's really not it's kind of an irony thing so I guess I was wrong but now I'm not, so have fun with that knowledge. Next up, we have this odd badge. Now, at first, I didn't really know what it was since it didn't quite look very familiar to me whatsoever, but after a little bit of research, it seems that this is the badge symbolizing the school she was from before Hope Speak Academy, and it seems these little tidbits here are as well. I don't really know the slightest clue of what the symbols mean outside of that, but I don't think that's really important. The skirt is made of pleat. That's pretty self-explanatory. Also, the fingernails are apparently removable. These may not seem important, but these fingernails were actually used as evidence against Junko and Oshima during the final murder of the first game. The boots are also made of a different reference material. Not really sure what that means, but yeah, sure, okay. She also has this necktie that's black and white, obviously to represent Monokuma yet again. Well, that's not very family friendly. Finally, we have this button right here, and it indeed does have an ordinary red-gray shape. This wasn't mentioned, but she also has this red bow tie. This could be a reference to how her sister was disguised as her. She also had a red bow tie, but that might be a bit of a stretch. But other than that, it seems this is what they've come up with when it comes to her design. Anything that is still in Japanese is what we couldn't translate, but if you guys know them, then please drop them into the comments below, so that'd be pretty helpful as well. Overall, her design represents her perfectly. It emphasizes the fact she's a supermodel, as well as representing her connection with Motokuma, her tool to world destruction. But now that we've gotten her design out of the way, it's time to talk about the other important thing to a character, and that's their personality. Junko Enoshima is not a good person. That much is obvious enough. However, there is much more depth than that. 
She's madly obsessed with the idea of despair, so much in fact that she's willing to do anything it takes to spread her despair with the rest of the world by any means necessary, even going as far as forcing students to murder each other. Not only that, but when she was made to be executed because of the rules she set up, she was craving it. The excitement she had to be brutally murdered by herself was actually kinda messed up. It's like pain with some sort of weird kink of hers. Not only that, but it really doesn't help that she stated that she hated the feeling of being born and that she was a mistake. Therefore, she feels to have nothing to lose if she's dead. However, another downside on her part is she hates not being entertained. Anytime someone has wanted to change the game in their favor, they were able to win her over by claiming it will make the game much more interesting. Another side effect of her boredom is one of my favorite things about her design. Not only does she hate getting bored of the world around her, she'll even get bored of herself. Due to this, you'll see her constantly change the way she acts all the time. It's just one of her quirks she uses to keep herself entertained. Her despair makes her bored with life, so it drives her to do what she can to make the world more entertaining for her. She simply gets joy out of seeing others suffer, so that is her form of entertainment. There is no limit to her dedication of despair. Clearly, with that all in mind, she's psychotic. There's no doubt about it. Not a whole lot is known about Junko's childhood outside of the fact she regrets being born. For her whole life, she was filled with despair. Like we discussed before, she was filled with so much despair that she practically craved it. Her dream was to paint the world in despair no matter what. That being said, it's time we get into her big debut, the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. According to the anime, with the help of her sister Mukuro Ikusaba, what she did to cause this event was motivate a class of students to murder each other. I'd probably show this scene, but like, YouTube probably wouldn't be very happy with that. Afterwards, she would begin to show the video to people, and the video would be so despair-inducing that it would cause the viewer to fall into despair. Her first victims were a class of Hope's Peak Academy, known as Class 77A. She brought them all into despair and made them like her main henchmen of sorts, and they became the remnants of despair. Unfortunately for the world, that was only the beginning. Soon despair began to spread across the city, then across the country, and soon across the world. Despair was spreading rapidly and so widespread all because of one girl and her passion to drop the world into despair and chaos. Shows what dedication can really accomplish. Hope's Peak Academy then became a shelter from the outside world to keep a class of ultimates known as Class 78 safe. However, what they failed to realize was that it was the same class Junko Manoshima was in, and she gained control over the facility. This is when Trigger Happy Havoc, the very first game, begins. Junko Manoshima trades places with Mukuro Ikusaba and works behind the scenes. Meanwhile, Mukuro Ikusaba will disguise herself as Junko Manoshima, so nobody suspects anything of her. Not long later, however, Mukuro Ikusaba breaks one of the school rules and Junko makes an example of her by killing her. That was another thing about Junko and Oshima. She's a big stickler for the rules. She may crave despair and be a little bit insane, but she still makes sure that she sticks by the rules no matter what. This trend will go on throughout the rest of the series as well. At the end of the game, Junko and Oshima is proven guilty for killing Mukuro Ikusaba and because of her craving of despair and following her own rules, she executes herself with an over-the-top execution combining all other executions throughout the first game. However, her impact wouldn't end there. Even after she died, all of her despair-loving followers were still alive and kicking. Makoto Naegi, as well as the newly formed Future Foundation, would work hard to stop the spread of despair and bring the world back to normal again. Well, as normal as it could get. The first idea was to capture the remnants of despair and put them into a simulation to get them all to get along with each other. However, it turned out someone created a program of Junko and Oshima, and it made its way into the program. However, the Future Foundation ended up fighting back and bringing an end to Junko and Oshima, setting all the remnants free from the program once again. However, Junko's impact wouldn't end there. This is what brings us to Ultra Despair Girls. It turned out she took in a group of kids who were going through some kind of struggles and pain in their childhood, and brought them up through despair. This group would be known as the Warriors of Hope. They took control over a city and pitted a bunch of adults into a killing game where the mind control kids in the city would go on a hunting spree of all the adults, including the two protagonists, Komaru Naegi and Toko Fukawa. Those two put a stop to it unsurprisingly, and the most we got out of Junko in the end was the fact that her virus lived on through a couple of Monokuma-like robots. Not a whole lot was found out about her from that point on. What we learned in the anime was stuff we already spoke of, and what we've seen of her in Danganronpa V3 was nothing really new. All we know is that after Ultra Despair Girls, the Future Foundation continued to battle with the virus of despair, and no for sure victory was yet seen. For all we know, some form of Junko Manoshima could still be out there, and we may never know until the next game that, as it stands right now, might not even happen. Danganronpa is a game of hope versus despair. 
Simple as that. So how does Junko Enoshima play a part in that? Well, if you had to ask that question, then clearly you weren't paying attention. Makoto and the Future Foundation represent hope, while Junko Enoshima represents despair. It seems as if as long as Junko Enoshima is making an impact, dead or alive, despair will always be around. Therefore, you can never truly get rid of despair. However, you can work to keep yourself from falling into it, as well as help others from doing so as well. Despair is powerful, but hope can be even stronger. Junko can also show us how if someone evil is dedicated enough, they can truly accomplish anything, no matter how deadly and world-crushing it may be. I mean, that's exactly what happened throughout all of Danganronpa. An evil person was dedicated enough to drop the world into despair, and besides, what did she even have to lose? I love Junko Enoshima. I think she's a very well-designed character in my opinion. She has an appearance that's iconic for anyone that's played the games, as well as a design that represents her pretty well in my opinion. Not only that, but her personality is great as well, and I'd even say it makes her character so memorable to begin with. I remember when I was first introduced to Junko, well, the real Junko, in the first game, I was instantly attached to her design, and I'd even say she's my favorite from the series as a whole. After all, as you might know, I'm a sucker for great villains, and that's exactly what she is. Throughout the whole series, she always felt like she was a lurking threat, even when she was dead. Like, you felt she could come back at any time, even though you saw with her own eyes that she was executed in a way that was practically unescapable. This fact of always having a presence dead or alive is one of the things I'd say makes an even stronger villain. If you can seem like a threat, even when you're not actually there, then you've clearly left an impact that I'd say is pretty darn powerful. Well that concludes the end of the first episode of this brand new series. It's something new, but it's something I can feel much more proud of, especially compared to... That other thing. Anyway, what did you guys think? Do you guys like seeing these kinds of videos? If so, let me know and I'll certainly make more like it since this was quite much more of a nicer ride of a video to make. Whether this means liking the video or dropping a comment down below, any input is greatly appreciated. Other than that, if you're new and you want to see the other stuff I make, then feel free to check them out. If you like what you see, then definitely feel free to subscribe down below. Anyway, this is Sten signing off. Goodbye.